Redo and block Holep for prostate adenomatous remnants. At the ICOA in Madrid, we have published an en bloc uh, green light enucleation technique. And from there, we evolved to an en bloc Holep with early apical release in men with prostatic hyperplasia. We present this video to describe the use of this technique where an incision is carried out at the apex to separate the sphincter from the prostatic apex and then a circumferential incision is carried out to remove the adenoma and block into the bladder in cases uh, that were previously treated. This case is a patient who was submitted to an open prostatectomy 10 years ago and it was obvious that some regrowth of uh, adenomatous nodules has taken place so the operation always starts by marking the limit of the sphincter with the apex. In this case we are using the Moses uh, fiber with the Moses uh, settings. That's the crista erythralis on top of the veromontanum that is cut to be able to start separating the apex from the sphincter at the beginning of the procedure. So you can see the sphincter is perfectly preserved and from that moment on the adenoma is going to be dissected circumferentially. We have learned over time that despite the appearance that the fossa is quite well, let's say, resected or free from adenomatous tissue, in these redo patients one has to look for the proper plane and follow it because many times we see that there is adenomatous remnants even in the areas where apparently the tissue was properly removed. This is the pre and post operative aspect. In this case there was remnant apical prostate anoma after TORP. This patient was submitting himself to self catheterization because he had two times TORP and they were assuring him that he had a weak bladder. We performed urodynamics on this patient and we saw that he had very good bladder contractions but he was heavily obstructed. So we found this apical uh, remnant at the apex and we decided to carry on a anablock removal of this tissue. So again right at the interface between sphincter and adenomatous remnant, we performed a circumferential incision. This incision allows us to separate the sphincter from the apex right at the edge, allowing for a total deobstruction of the bladder outlet. This is a relatively fast and easy operation. And as uh, we mentioned before, it's important to try to get all the way down to the capsule. In this case, after t t two TRPs, it looked as if there was not much tissue left, but one has to try to go all the way to the capsule and remove all the remaining adenomatous tissue. That's uh, the crystal erythralis over the veromontanum and it is possible to see that there is still some tissue left and it would be very sad to do a retreatment on a patient and leave a residual anomatous tissue that could cause problems again. The patient voided the next morning after four years of self catheterization. He was extremely happy. You can see the excellent preservation of the sphincter. This third case is a redo and block holep after thulep. This patient was submitted, or I would say, after thuvep, because thulep is supposedly able to remove all the adenomatous tissue. But in this case, despite there was a good cavitation in some of the aspects of the, of the prostatic fossa, there was residual tissue. And again, this is the circumferential incision carried out, cutting 
the crista urethralis and dissecting the tissue all around the prostate. Again, despite the look of a nice deobstruction on the left side, we followed the plane, the anatomical plane, to perform a total in block enucleation of the prostate. And it is very striking to see how much tissue was left in this case and very satisfying to be able to remove everything. This and block approach provides very good irrigation, very good visibility and this is the tissue that was left behind that has been removed completely with this and block technique. So as one can see after watching these videos the apical preservation is amazing, the treatment is radical and definitive. I think it's very unlikely that these patients will ever need another operation. And then we present this last case where after vaporization of the prostate, the patient had still uh, bothersome symptoms. And again, you see that over time when adnomatous tissue is left behind, there is further growth. Again, the same strategy, again using the MOSES technology that provides excellent cutting properties and excellent coagulation, especially useful when there is a lot of fibrous tissue. That's again cutting crystal erythralis or whatever is left of it on top of the vero montanum and the circumferential dissection, not settling for what looks as a nice cavity but trying to follow the anatomical plane between adenoma and capsule. In some areas there might be a good uh, original work and the tissue might have been taken down to the capsule, but in some other areas there is still residual tissue. And this is the last case, again excellent preservation of the sphincter and the sphincter's mucosa and as a conclusion, and block holip is effective for redo procedures, there's always more tissue to remove than it is apparent by the look of the fossa, and a radical removal of anomatous tissue will reduce the chance of retreatment in the future.